administrator, and friend. This year marks the first time in the event's history Jimmy Wofford will not be joining us in person. He leaves behind a legacy that all horse people must be just that, horse people. We asked riders to share some of their favorite memories of the man who so greatly impacted modern eventing. Whenever anybody asks me to speak or uh, write something about Jimmy, I find it an um, overwhelming sense of responsibility to do the man justice. It's, he's a very hard person to, well, almost impossible person to encapsulate in a few short sentences, but Jimmy was an athlete, he was a coach, he was a friend to the sport of eventing, he was a conservationist, he was a humanitarian, he was a historian, he was hilarious, um, and he was very kind and, and extremely honest. And um, you could trust Jimmy in any situation, in any facet of his life, you could trust Jimmy. And he, what he did for our sport, for hundreds of people in our sport, in the sport of eventing, U.S. eventing, and also around the globe, uh, really, I'm not sure would I, will ever be matched again. He, um, he would probably consider himself a teacher first and foremost, and he definitely was a teacher. He was a student of the sport. Um, he's, he was a, a horseman in almost the forgotten sense of the word, a real horseman. Um, and he was never, he was always learning and he was always commenting and his, whenever he wrote about the sport, he was, had no trouble with being contradicted or getting into, into a debate with something, you know, somebody about something. And he was thinking on such a broad spectrum, having been involved in it, you know, involved in it as it evolved through the decades, that his, um, his intelligence and his uh, research and his heart and, and his uh, you know, just true love for the sport uh, is, you know, inspirational is a, a word that gets thrown around and it's, <clears throat> he's more than inspirational, he's steadfast and we shall miss him every single day. Jimmy always knew how to push rider buttons in a very, uh, he knew the ones to rile up. I'll never forget the one year when he did his, you know, Kentucky picks, and he said that Karen O'Connor had gotten a tattoo, and where could, you know, who know, could anybody guess where she had gotten it? And I don't know if Karen O'Connor has tattoos, but it was to rile her up, and I remember that was a um, that worked for her, and he knew her so well. Um, and I didn't know Jimmy; I didn't ride with him a ton. I, I had the utmost respect for him and his legacy and was able to have some lessons with him. And um, he could read a student instantly and know exactly what buttons to press to get the best result. Jimmy and I had a very uh, funny relationship um, because I'm from the West Coast and diehard West Coaster. Um, he made fun of me a lot because of that. The year I was here with Wembley, he used to do the Chronicle of the Horse predictions on the horses and he said, oh, Tammy will be looking to just have a nice run with this horse. And, um, and it, he was always great about kind of inspiring you through anger. <laughs> and uh, I just always felt like he purposely like underrated um, what my plans were with the horses when I came here. And I saw him after cross country, after being very close to the optimum time, I had like four time. And um, he goes, I see, my, I see my plan worked. And I was like, I can't believe you just said that I was gonna have like 20 time. I mean, he always had these like very one line, very wise um, comments that he would say. And little did you know, I mean, you knew, but he always, he was always able to, to inspire you in a way that um, gave you motivation through anger. <laughs> so I would say that um, we are definitely going to miss miss that about him. Jimmy and I kind of go way back, and um, you know our sort of banter started when he was the, my young rider coach with a horse called Pajama Game, and um, he told me that. Uh, there was no way that PJ was going to make it around Kentucky, and uh, so the <clears throat> first time he was tenth, the second time he was fourth, 
And uh, from then on, Jimmy always uh, made the joke about trying to make me mad to be successful here. So, uh, um, you know, we miss him terribly and, uh, you know, we have a lot of fun with those stories. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be so different not having Jimmy here this year. He was such an icon and um, just a great guy and uh, just loved the sport, loved this event. And uh, he was always around with his ATV and his black labs and uh, Friday evening he'd have the huge crowd going around the course and telling everybody with his loudspeaker uh, how, it's, how it should be jumped and uh, uh, yeah so he's going to be missed by everybody but uh, we all got great memories of him. He was such a funny guy. He'd always, uh, every lesson at, when he switched from person to person he'd always rub his hands and go, alright next victim. <laughs> and I always thought it was hilarious. I will always think of Jimmy with his black labs, um, usually out for a quiet walk in the morning of cross country, having his final looks and thoughts. Karen has a lot of wonderful stories of when she worked at Jimmy's, and um, we always like hearing about them at the dinner table or anywhere, even in the ring. She usually comes up with anything that makes you feel a little bit better, and she's like, Jimmy told me that. <laughs> When I was 10, I rode with him in a clinic in California at Eventful Acres, and my pony didn't like water. And um, although I was super intimidated by him, he did help me um, get my pony into the water. And since then, I've actually had a lot more confidence. Like, he gave me a lot of confidence on that, in that clinic. That's actually really stuck with me. My great memories of Jimmy was leading the great spectator course walks here at Kentucky. Uh, for years and years and years he just had this huge following of people and Jimmy was awesome at it. He really took hours and hours to explain every jump, every detail and uh, was just a great educator for all the, all the fans of eventing. Hard nosed but genius, super supportive and I was lucky enough to um, ride with him. He was our team coach for Canada. Um, from my first Olympic Games and to have someone with that much knowledge and experience and behind you and supporting you and um, even to this day you know you think about the things he told you um, and you know it's it's a big loss to our sport that he's not here anymore and um, he was always someone like even here on cross country day if he had a question he always had an answer um, was always there to support you and um, he was very very special and also a badass rider <laughs> you know like it's kind of like the old school horses they don't make them like that anymore um, you know he was he was definitely a legend of the sport whenever I think about Jimmy the first image that pops into mind is uh, just always him on the back of his uh, little kind of ATV cruising around with his beautiful black lab in the back and he always had uh, an incredibly sharp wit, but he always had, seemed to sense when you kind of maybe needed a, a word of encouragement or support, and he bled red, white, and blue. He loved American eventing, and I just have a ton of respect for his passion for the sport, and just how he was kind of always there for any rider, but especially the American ones. Um, I think uh, I also have a lot of fond memories of him emceeing a lot of our annual meetings and different public functions, and. The guy was truly hilarious and, uh, you know, he did so many things well. He was a fabulous rider, trainer, public speaker, writer. Um, I mean, he was just a, a true renaissance man and he's greatly missed. I loved his daffodil, his daffodil dandelion article he wrote about Kentucky because it was the year that my first year at Kentucky and Ping fell on the pavement and he wrote this. I don't know if you ever read it, but it was about all the all the dandelions and all the tears that were cried here. I was like, I got me a dandelion or two up in here. The very first time that I ever came to the Kentucky Horse Park and to um, what was then the uh, inaugural CCI four star, now five star, um, I was training with someone called um, Don Sechi and Jimmy Wofford had been his coach and mentor, and um, we actually walked the uh, inaugural four-star with Jimmy Wofford. It was really, really cool, and I'll never forget it. <laughs>